Hey everyone, I'm Joey with Joey's Balloon Company. Today I'm gonna to go over a few of balloon twisting basics. Whether you're a part of the Joey's Balloon Company training program or you're just here to learn a little bit about balloon twisting, welcome to the channel and thanks so much for watching. A few of the things that we're gonna be learning today are why we inflate the balloons to a certain length depending on the type of design we're making, how to prevent the balloons from popping, several types of twists, bends, and how to link the balloons together, creating balloon bulbs on the end of the balloon without sucking on the end of it, a quick break off method for tearing your balloon in into two different pieces, some uses for the scrap balloons that are created with the break-off method, and a couple other fun characteristics of balloons like static electricity and putting objects inside the balloons. Before we get started, you're gonna need a couple things. You're going to need a balloon hand pump. This is a dual action pump, so that means when you pull out, it shoots air out of the end, and when you push in, it shoots air out of the end. When you're using this, don't hold it against your body because air is being sucked in through these holes in the back, and that will prevent you from being able to pull on your pump. You're also going to need some balloons Balloon twisting balloons. These are 260 size balloons, which means when they're fully inflated, they are two inches in diameter and 60 inches in length. Links for both of these items can be found in the description below. Make sure to keep your balloons in a climate controlled room temperature area. If you leave your balloons in a car or next to a window on a hot day, they could warp and pop easier. And the same thing goes for cold temperatures. You would not want to leave your balloons in a non-climate controlled storage unit where they could become brittle and dry out because there's a good chance when you're twisting, they'll pop more easily. Another thing you're going to need is a sharpie for drawing on the character faces on the balloon designs that we're going to be making today. And the last thing you're going to need is to like this video for the YouTube algorithm to help other beginner balloon twisters just like you find this information and hopefully learn a lot and have fun in the process. Thanks so much for watching, for liking this video, and for subscribing to our channel. That really helps us out and it's a super small free thing that you can do to show your support. You can also click the notification bell to be notified every time we post a new video for balloon twisting or balloon decorating. Once you've gathered your supplies, let's get started. First off, let's use our dual action hand inflator to inflate a 260 balloon about halfway. This is a little more than halfway. It doesn't really matter how much you inflate, but just leave a good size tail at the end. This is the tail, the uninflated part. The reason we use a tail is because we're gonna start twisting on the nozzle side, and as we twist, the air is gonna be pushed through the balloon, and we wanna have space for that air to go. Before you tie your balloon off, let a little bit of air out that will soften the balloon as you start twisting. The single most difficult part of this job is tying this knot in the balloon. I'll show you how I do it, but feel free to use your own method and whatever's quickest for you. With one hand, I'm gonna hold the nozzle tight. With the other hand, I'm gonna stick my index finger out and loop the balloon down so that I can hold the balloon and the nozzle with my first hand. And I'm gonna pull up with my index finger on the other. I'm gonna bring this nozzle around the back side, I'm going to barely put a piece of the nozzle through so that I can let go with my other hand. And because it's elastic, it's just sticking to my finger right now. I can now use my hand to pull it out the front and pull my finger out and you have a tied balloon. If you're realizing you only have a little bit of elasticity here at the end with your nozzle, not a big deal. All you have to do is grab it a, about an inch higher, cut off all of the air, let it go, and now you'll have a longer elastic nozzle to work with. Generally, before every design, I'll tell you how many finger lengths tail we need. This would be about a five finger length tail. This is just a way of measuring how much air to put in the balloon. When you start balloon twisting, make sure to only twist one side of the balloon. So I'm going to twist only the side that has the tail on it. And I always rotate the balloon in the same direction. So when I twist, I'm only going to be rotating one side of the balloon and I'm twisting the top of the balloon towards me. It doesn't matter if you're twisting towards you or away from you, just keep it consistent when you're making your shapes. It's a good rule of thumb to go by so that your shape doesn't come untwisted as you're making it. Go ahead and try twisting the tail end of the balloon towards you about three times. Now you'll notice if I let go of one side, this twist is gonna come undone. The only way for this twist to stay in place is for me to hold both sides of the twist or add an additional twist from a separate part of the balloon or another balloon in order to get this twist to stay. You can also continue to make twists. We call these consecutive twists. You can use consecutive twists for a lot of things and here's how you do it. Continue holding one side of your twist, grab a hold of it with your same hand and then make another twist. Try to make this bubble about a one inch bubble. Again, if you're holding both sides and you're twisting the tail end of the balloon towards you, this bubble will stay. So let's try that a couple more times. Let's make four more one inch bubbles.
You can make as many of these as you'd like, and remember, as long as you're holding both sides of the twists, these middle ones are not gonna come undone. Now, if we want all these to stay in place without having to hold them, we need to secure the end of these somehow. So let's go ahead and tie these two twists together. All we need to do is put them close together, squeeze with one hand, and then take the pieces that you're forming and twist them a couple times. Three or four times will do. Another type of twist that we're gonna make is called an ear twist or a pinch twist. Go ahead and make a one inch bubble in your balloon and I'll show you how to make this ear twist slash pinch twist. Once you have your one inch bubble, you are going to fold the two sides down so that the bubble is on top and your two twists are on the sides. With one hand, you're going to squeeze the two sides just under the twists, lift up on your one inch bubble and twist around about three times. That is called an ear twist. You might be able to see it kind of looks like a character ear. It's also called a pinch twist because we pinched it before twisting it. Putting an ear twist in your balloon will make a 90 degree angle with your balloon, which is good to know when you need to improvise something. You can also add two ear twists or three ear twists right next to each other to make a joint sturdier. The way that we would do this is make another one inch bubble. I'm gonna push we're just under this twist up into this twist that I already have in here, pull out on this one inch bubble, twist it around three times, and now we have two ear twists in the same spot. Now I'm gonna make a third ear twist right on this joint to make sure that it's a very sturdy joint and that both sides can come out at whatever direction I want them to come out at. Remember, you can push on this part of the balloon with, that has the tail because we still have room to push the air down. Push that into this twist that we've already made. Twist your one inch bubble around two or three times and voila, we have three ear twists. So now we can form this balloon coming straight up into it and we can move this balloon around wherever we want. We can have it going, you know, less than 90 degrees going down. We can have it going exactly 90 degrees. We can have it going straight up. This is a great way to create a strong joint in whatever you're making. Another type of twist we can use is called a pedal twist. It's called a pedal twist or a loop twist because it makes a loop or the shape of a petal of a flower. Loop twists slash petal twists are very easy to make. All you need to do is take the balloon, bend it over, squeeze them together, and twist your petal two or three times. You've got your petal twist. These are a few of the basic twists that we're gonna be using for our balloon training. When it comes to linking two balloons together, there's a couple ways that you can do this. The first way involves attaching two middle parts of a balloon together, so you would just put pressure here and twist the top. If you twist it around a few times, the balloon should stay like this. You can attach a nozzle of your balloon to the middle part of your balloon by bending it down, holding the nozzle and twisting it around. In order to get this joint to stay, you're going to need to pull the nozzle through the loop that you just made. Otherwise, this loop is just gonna come undone. The same thing goes for if you're trying to attach the nozzle of a separate balloon to a joint. If you just twist this nozzle around the joint, it's not gonna stay very well. So you can twist it around a little bit and then at the end, make sure that you pull it through the loop or through another aspect of your joint. I've twisted it around. Now I'm going to stick it through this loop. If you want to attach the middle part of a balloon to a joint, all you need to do is either make a twist here or just put pressure in the area that you want to connect, slide it into the joint. I'm going to weave this balloon that I just attached around the other aspects of this joint in order to secure this balloon. Another reason why I want to weave this around a few times is to cut off the air from this part of the balloon and this part of the balloon because there's a lot of shapes that you need to use the quick break and when I stop squeezing this balloon to let the air out of this part, I don't want to deflate this part of the balloon. When you have something a little extra like this, go ahead and tie it around a few more times and hide it so that you can't see it. I usually just stick it in the joint as far as I can. When you do a quick break, which I'm gonna show you later on in this video, make sure to save your scraps because you can use this as a tongue of a dog. You can blow this part up and use it as the jewels on the top of a tiara. And there are many shapes that you can make that only require a small amount of color of one balloon. So by using a scrap balloon, you don't need to waste an entire full length balloon. Now I'm gonna show you how you can manipulate the shape of a balloon. Go ahead and blow up another 260 balloon. It doesn't matter how much you blow it up, just over halfway. 
If I wanted to make this a 90 degree angle, but not have a pinch twist right here, I would just bend it, squeeze it as hard as you can, and just understand that these are pretty durable balloons. So as you're squeezing, pinch the bend right here. You're just gonna grab it, squeeze it, pinch it, let it go. Do that like four or five times and this will put a bend in your balloon. You can always manipulate that back into a straight line by bending it backwards the other way, pulling on it so that it goes straight up and down. That would be how you would straighten out a sword or anything that you need to be in a straight line. You can also round out the balloon by moving both sides up and down. There we have a more rounded bend in it. If you want it even more curly, you can make a spiral with the balloon. It kind of just looks like a corkscrew and you can squeeze each side of the balloon alternating and squeeze it pretty hard. Don't use your nails, but you can squeeze it pretty hard. So now we have more of a curly cue. Remember to pause this video at any point if you need to practice a certain skill. Next, we're going to be making a bulb on the end of this balloon. In order to have a piece of inflated balloon here, an uninflated part in between, and then the inflated part on the other end as well, you're going to cut off the air so that air can't get between here and here. And with your other hand, you're just gonna kind of slowly work your way up. You wanna keep your pinky finger and your ring finger kind of tight down here at the bottom so that air doesn't continue to go back down. All the while cutting the air off right here with your other hand and slowly working your way. Oh, see how sometimes that will happen? Okay, so I can just squeeze this balloon and it will go back into here. Now I can squeeze the bottom of this bulb because I already have it cut off here and I can use my other hand to work it up a little bit more and once I have a little bit more space, I can cut it off again, continue working that bulb up to the top, and you can let go and you have a balloon bulb. You can also add more air to this bulb by squeezing the bottom part here. So I'm gonna squeeze it, and as you can see, that bulb gets bigger. And if I think this is too much air in the bulb for whatever I'm making, I can always squeeze this and get it back down to where I want. Now I'm gonna show you the apple slash tulip twist. Take the nozzle, stick your finger into the balloon, grab the nozzle with your other hand from the outside of the balloon, about one inch down, and then carefully roll the balloon off of your finger to get it out. Now you're gonna take the top of this and twist it. Twist it a good amount of times, I'd say probably seven times or so, so that your nozzle is actually on the inside of the balloon on this side of your twist. And to get this tulip twist slash apple twist to stay, push these two balloons together and voila you have what's called the apple slash tulip twist. Another cool thing you can do with your balloon is use static electricity to stick these to the wall or ceiling. What you're gonna do is wrap your hand around it and quickly move it all the way to the end of the balloon. Don't do it slowly because it makes a terrible screeching sound. You're gonna wanna do this about 20 times and then you're gonna be able to stick it to the wall or the ceiling. And for the last skill that you're gonna be learning in this video is the quick break off method. So don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, blow up another balloon, and here we go. You're gonna to wanna to take a balloon and flatten it as much as you can. It doesn't work very well if you have it twisted. All we want is flat. So once you've created a flat surface area, you can probably see my thumbnail sticking through right here. With your other hand, you're going to slide it, pulling the other side of the balloon along your thumb and your thumbnail on this hand is actually going to break the balloon in half. So now we have two extra pieces. With this, you can just let it go. With the other part of my balloon, which is the part that generally I'm working on, let's say this was a certain type of animal and I didn't need to use the rest of that one, I'm gonna probably wanna tie this off. So give yourself enough elasticity in this to tie another knot in it.
And there we go. Thanks so much for watching the beginner balloon twisting basics video with Joey's Balloon Company. I'm Joey, I really appreciate you guys watching. Don't forget to like the video for the YouTube algorithm. That really helps us out and it's a very small, free way that you can show your support. You can subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell if you wanna be notified every time we post a new tutorial video. Don't forget to check out some of our other tutorials and good luck with your balloon twisting journey. If you're interested in learning how to put objects inside the balloons, check out the video in the description below. I'm Joey, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.